Inside episode 32 on Outsourcing Life, I interview another fellow Aussie entrepreneur where we talk about minimalistic outsourcing. It's where you do outsourcing with less to achieve more. Also, in the Insider Info section, I have a tool that allows you to connect to multiple social networks all at once to save time. All right, let's rock the music. Want to get tons of leads from YouTube without breaking a sweat? Outsourcing you. Yeah. Oh, go again. This is Outsourcing Live with Tyrone Shum. Outsourcing the hard stuff so you can focus on the fun stuff. Hey there and welcome to another exciting episode on the Outsourcing Live podcast. My name is Tyrone Shum and today I've got a special guest that I've invited over to talk a little bit more about minimalistic outsourcing. But before I do jump into that, let me just share with you what's been going on in my life in the most recent weeks. In actual fact, in the last couple of weeks, we've been celebrating Chinese New Year, a very, very big event that runs over about two weeks. I know my relatives over in Malaysia have been celebrating this and you go over to each and every one of each person's house and you drop over, give them some gifts and also receive some red packet, which in other terms is mullah or money for us. So that's been great. But as I've just recently got married only a few months ago, uh, actually it was about mid last year, I now have the responsibility to give out red packets and I'm located in Sydney and I was just talking about my extended family that was in Malaysia. They do that over a two-week period where they visit people whereas in Sydney, we just have like this one big celebration where all our families come together and pretty much eat dinner and just get wasted with food. <laughs> it's like a 10-course a meal where you just get so stuffed that you can't move right at the end. But I've learned that over the years after eating those kind of foods that I only want to eat what I want to eat which is like lobsters, abalones and all the yummy seafood and then the rest I just don't eat at all. I know it sounds like it's time disrespecting to the Chinese culture and that's what it is but you don't want to be eating to your stuffed and full and I've learned that lesson over the years I've grown up. Anyway, coming back to it, as I mentioned, I've got married and being married in the Chinese culture, it's our turn to be giving to the younger generation red packet or red money. So this year, it was our first time ever to be able to go up to every one of our nephews, nieces and uh, younger generation and hand them these red packets. And it was a great feeling because it was just like a, a, a turn for us to give back. And I just felt so, so good to be able to do that. And I thought, oh man, <laughs> it's my turn this year. I usually receive money every year and this year it's changed. So after 30 years, it's my the turn of the tide and it's my turn to give back. But in saying that, it's funny because in our Shum family, the elders still give us red packet money. So I actually didn't go without any. So <laughs> it was actually pretty good for me still. And my wife even was very, very happy. And she asked me the same question, said, hey, darling, uh, aren't we supposed to be the only ones giving it out and not be receiving? I said, well, I guess the Shum family continues on the tradition. The elders always give back to the younger, so we still receive it even though we are now married. Anyway, that's what's been happening and that's just been pretty fun and exciting. And this is a tradition that goes on around this time, either late January or early February where there's the Chinese New Year traditions and we go out there and celebrate it with families. Also, too, as well just mentioned, Previously, in my own business that I had for dragon boating, it's that time of year where we have those big festivity events and down at Darling Harbour, you'll probably see that if you live in Sydney that you can go down to the Darling Harbour and watch these dragon boat races that happen on the weekends where they're just racing. Like They've got like five boats that are going down a lane or this, this wide lane racing for about two or 300 meters and competing for a gold medal for their team. So that's some of the additional outside things that are happening inside the Chinese New Year festivities and there's plenty of other things that go on. But anyway, I thought I'd just share that with you, part of my Chinese culture and heritage and interesting things that's been going on in my life as well. All right, coming back to outsourcing, I uh, wanted to share with you today inside this really exciting interview, I've actually invited over the Outsourcing Queen. She actually owns the website outsourcingqueen.com. And her name is Katie Shaw. So what Katie has done in the past is that she's come together and found a lot of great systems and implemented a lot of great things from what she's been doing in her own business. She comes from a virtual assistant background and therefore is very, very systematized. But what she's learned over the years is to actually keep it at a minimal in order to be able to get the work done. 
because we as in society, even myself on a day-to-day basis get so caught up in so much stuff. So, what we find out from Katie is that she'll talk about how to go about in approaching the minimalistic outsourcing type of systems and the ways that she does it. So, let's just jump straight into this interview with Katie. I live, I, this is all, all part of the minimalistic lifestyle that I've actually taken on because um, being two hours out of Brisbane, I'm also only like two and a half hours out of the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast and so I have the best life. I have a city life style with a country home country. living. <laughs> <laughs> I like the sound of that. Well, talking about minimalistic outsourcing, let's talk a little bit more about that and uh, maybe the first thing, let's define what this is and how, how it can apply to any business. Um, I really personally, I love Zen Habits. Um, oh, what's his name? Leo? Leo Gabalta? Yes. Um, and I was reading his book and it's, so people often get minimalistic confused with being frugal. They're not the same thing. Mm. Um, minimalistic is just having the things you need to function, um, the way you want to live your life. So if, um, for instance, it's easier to apply it in terms of your house. You don't need the latest plasma TV. Mm. You do not need um, three bedrooms or even um, a giant house with um, furniture. You don't need those things. You just need the uh, amount of rooms that fit the people in your house, a table and a computer if you are obviously in the digital business. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's about keeping it small but um, enjoying what you have. Mm, absolutely. It's probably the better way to put it. So, really, the, the term that a lot of people call or say is less is more. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a nice way of putting it. Yeah, you keep the minimal things that help you declutter life and making sure that you just focus on what's most important. And I think at, at the end of the day, it depends on what lifestyle you want. If you're if you're on a minimalistic lifestyle where you just have the, the essentials in life and you just have a business that's on the side and you're living and experiencing life, traveling, uh, visiting family, friends, etc., really you don't need to be sitting behind a box or TV or flat screen plasma every night or something like that, right? Absolutely. I don't have a TV. I don't actually have a TV anymore because I I always get TV on demand on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube, that's perfect. And let's talk a little bit more than how does minimalistic apply to outsourcing? How can we look at it from that perspective? Um, well, it, it's, okay, so more so, I guess, we're internet entrepreneurs, so we'll focus it around those um, terminologies mm. as such because when you actually start an internet marketing, there's so many things going on. You need SEO, you need social media, you need your website, you need to mm. have this tactic employed. I, I'm i not an SEO person um, because I, I do do the basics of SEO but I don't do heaps because I'm a social person yep. um, and I get a better referral through people but I have found other people switch the other way. Usually you choose one avenue over the other um, to get your resources. Um, so... To keep it simple, all I have is a blog, um, a contact form on it, and social media. That's all I do. And to maintain it, um, I have a project manager who ha- looks after my website. I have a customer service person who looks after my customer service inquiries, and I handle all my social media. That's, that's it. Yeah, that, uh, I mean, that's keeping it really simple because... There can be so many things. You could have a YouTube channel, iTunes podcast, you could have Google Plus, <laughs> Facebook. We could go on for days. So there's a lot of things. That... I have I have all those things, but I really only face uh, focus on Facebook and Twitter for mm-hmm. my social media because that's um, I've learned where my audience is and mm-hmm. you know, who are my clients and who are my friends and what works the most. So I use the tools that are most effective Um, and I systemize it so that it only takes me, I say less than 10 minutes for beginners but it takes me like two minutes in the day to maintain those things. Wow, that's Um, really fast. (laughs) I mean, when I hop on Facebook or Twitter, it takes me a lot longer than that to be able to look at all that stuff. How do you do it? 
Um, well, one, I use Hootsuite. Um, yeah. It has a, a scheduling tool and usually you don't need to talk to people that often online, honestly. <laughs> um, I love people and you know me, I'm a bit of a people connector. Yeah. But I think it's information overload and um, and spending too much scrolling and finding hints and tips and information. So I... I actually have a list now of the areas I love. So I've got what is going on in social enterprise, what is going on in um, entrepreneurship, and what is going on in social media. Yep. And then I have fun things I love to do, what's going on in adventure, as in um, four-wheel driving and fishing um, and fashion. And yep. then I recycle all the, that information and I put out – anything that applies to those situations out there. Okay, so um, from what I can understand, when you do hop on to say, for example, Twitter or Facebook using Hootsuite, you're uh, marketing those items that you've got focus dedicated on. Is that what you're doing? Yes. And, yeah. um, so, and with the beauty of Hootsuite is that you can schedule things. So, <laughs> oh, of course. That's you can put it out at, so that you're not just going boom, 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 boom and spamming people with all your comments in one row. You can time it to go out at different times and then you check in. Like I have a check-in time. So 10 a.m. is my usual check-in time for having conversations. And I don't, you know, to actually type a response takes less than five seconds. I've timed myself <laughs> just to see how... Um, because I, I, I'm taking a whole measurable approach to what I do. Yeah. So, so it's more about productivity and also keeping the time down as minimal as possible. So you do the, the least you can to get the most effective result, hopefully from what you're seeing from your results. Yeah, and, and I'm still making friends, meeting people and having fun. Yeah, absolutely. You also mentioned just not long ago uh, about product project manager and that's what you have in your team plus also a customer service person in your team. Let's talk yeah. a little bit more about that. How firstly did you get started to find that project manager and also the customer service because most people start out usually just go out and find a virtual assistant and find someone who they need in their team to start off with to handle administration tasks and stuff. Where What was your approach in this? Well, um, unlike other internet marketers, before I began to become even remotely within that industry, I was actually the virtual assistant. So um, it was my job to do these things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you know. so I know what I was looking for, and I know um, what a pain in the ass some people are. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's not a, it, and it, it wasn't their fault. It was my fault because I wasn't clear on what I wanted. So I did what everybody else does when they start out and test. Yep. You know, I love that whole four hour work week process. So I went in and I negotiated my heart out and I did, um, I think it's VA for you. Um, that's a, a site. Um, I also was, um, Personally, because I was a virtual assistant in a, um, a virtual assistant program called VA Placements, and so I had a network, and I was, and I just I test. In short, I tested and tweaked until I got sick of it. So do it. So basically, as a virtual assistant, you kind of already had, say, for example, clients that were coming in asking you for, to do certain types of work. Uh, and then from there, you, you pretty much formulate the system which you could just find someone else in replacement to take over that role. Is that what's happened? It has, but um, I ended up just meeting friends who <laughs> could look after it for me um, because I, I did have um, a really great project manager in the Philippines um, through your web PA, um, yep. Shaylee. She was amazing, um, but... For other things, I just needed a more holistic approach um, to handle it. And so I found that um, I love the number three for some reason. So everything happens in three. Um, mm -hmm. I'm one. Um, I have a project manager for web because 
sometimes those two people don't meet up, customer service and web. They're, their brains are wired yeah, differently. Yeah, definitely. I know that for a fact. I've got a team like that too. <laughs> That's why I need the uh, virtual assistant and customer mm -hmm. support. And then you've got someone who's a web PA or sorry, a web developer. Yeah, and so I, I let Shaylee go even if she was awesome because I really needed to split it for mm. myself to function better. Okay. And so uh, I guess to answer your question, Really, I think I made a lot of errors and trials in figuring out what I wanted um, and how to make it work and then realizing the people who can make it work for me and knew the information without me having to train them. Yeah, I mean, it's good to be able to share that and I, I think for listeners on this call, they wouldn't mind finding out some of your trials and errors that you've done. Like, you don't <laughs> have to go through every one of them but maybe if you wouldn't mind sharing just some stuff that they can learn from mistakes because we all make mistakes. When I first started, I made a ton of mistakes and I can always <laughs> share those things so people can learn from it but what was it that you found? Why, why did you let go of, was it Shayla did you say? Shaylee. Yeah, Shaylee. What was the reason behind that and what happened? To, to lead you to make that decision? Um, I didn't know what I wanted, to be honest. Mm. I was, that's probably it in a summary. I didn't, uh, I was moving at, you know, gung ho speed. Yeah. <laughs> and um, when you have a full time or, or you're paying someone full time, you want to occupy their time. Yeah. Um, and, and so I was occupying her time with, with things that actually weren't going to go through. And I had to step back and go, what is it I wanted to do? Um, and, and I realized that having her, because she's in the Philippines, while she could handle um, my emails, she couldn't do telephone calls because it, in Australia it just doesn't transcend well, yeah. you know. Um, and I needed someone who could do both. So um, that's why I got a customer service person. And then when it came to managing the things, I needed somebody who got it to have the conversation with me. Yeah. Um, and while she got it, she was still technically my, my personal assistant. And I, I needed somebody who could bounce off me um, to make it function. And and knew the strategic process of what it took to create a website. So um, most people in the industry actually know that website designers and developers are two different things. Mm. But to the average person, they think it's the one thing. Mm, that's right. It's so true. Like I, I, I can see where you're coming from because if you've got like maybe an executive assistant, not a personal assistant, but maybe an executive assistant slash managerial type of person, they could probably be more or less your project manager. Is that correct to say from that point of view? Yes. Yeah. So you're sort of going even a higher level up. Like you're looking more or less like a CEO for your company to run everything day to day, manage everything, rather than the virtual assistant coming back to you and go, So what's next? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes absolute sense and I think that's that's where the, everybody should be heading anyway eventually but when they're first starting out, depending on your budget and depending on what you're looking for, you've got to start somewhere on that side of things. Well, what works brilliantly for me is that I actually don't have them on a salary and I don't pay them monthly, I pay them projectly. Oh, um, okay, yep. So, it, it, you know, I'm, I'm, so my problem with Shaylee was not because she was anything wrong but was... I was filling her time because I was paying her so on a monthly okay. basis and um, for a certain amount of hours whereas with my customer service person and my project manager, I go, these are the projects and then I pay them by project. It's much more manageable than I'm not filling time. Yeah, no, definitely and also too, I guess when you're paying by project, it should be a little bit less, right because you're not having to pay a monthly fee. Or would it, be, um, would it, it be, works out better. Works out better. It works out better for me. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't say it's less or more um, because uh, I'm just trying to think. But, you know, what's in an hour? What's the value of an hour? <laughs> yeah, comparison um, to what's value in a task to be completed and delivered. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So, yeah, that's really, really good that you've talked about that because I think it's just changing a mindset on how to go about it. So, mostly focus on trying to find that high level 
a team player that could fit in the role that you could actually hire on a project basis rather than on a monthly basis to be able to run the business. So right now then, what are you currently doing if, you, if you've started out as a virtual assistant, you've got your virtual assistant business, what are you currently doing right now? What is your main core uh, business? So my main core business is project managing for uh, uh, high-end internet marketers um, social enterprises and online retailers. Wow, okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> very, very um, high tech terms. <laughs> sorry. Um, so, <laughs> high end internet marketers, these people make millions of dollars um, marketing on the internet. Um, yeah. they, they, while they do that and they might be seen and known, and some of us, them are friends of ours. Yes. Um, <laughs> Um, they actually have other projects going on behind the scenes that nobody else sees. So, you know, I'm involved in those things that nobody else sees. Ah, uh, okay. So you help them and, out in terms of putting together the whole project and find the right people for it. Mm, um, and this goes from managing their digital media to outsourcing to social media. Wow, okay. That's very, very interesting. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit more since this, this podcast is based on outsourcing. Talk a little bit more about how you go about outsourcing these projects then. Say one of your high-end marketers come to you and say, Katie, I want this to be done. What, what's a process that you go through to be able to find these people or how does it all work? Uh, well, what a, you know, I, I, I go to pen and paper first. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's, let's start with that. <laughs> um, and I write out the project title. So I write out my client's name, what is their goal, and I, I summarize it. I Twitter size it is, is what I call it because I do it up to 140 characters. This is so about me minimalizing it and just going dot, dot, dot. Yeah. I don't write out whole paragraphs or sentence. I go, so it's the, the, the person's name, the company name, what's their goal in 140 characters or less, what is the next step I need to do? Yep. Then I do it. Then I do what's the next step after that? And then I do it. And it it's really um, depends. So, for instance, if you're starting with a, um, for instance, I have an online retailer. Yep. Um, and she hasn't got a website yet um, and she's wanting to make it an easy process to, to do because she's just been using Facebook, um, is... The next step after talking to her is get a brief. Get a brief of what the website is, what it consists of, what it needs, and then I send that off to my website project manager to organize and quote on. Yep. Um, so after that, the website brief is done. It, it sort of includes the social media brief at the same time, but I do that, and then I have the customer service and sometimes training. So it's just going, what are the three strings that make the project work? Yeah. So And you, then do them. And do them. So pretty much you, you'll have your web project manager write up the specs or the brief for the client and then therefore send it back to you. Then you'll add your social media aspect and then send it back to the client coming back together with a full proposal which has probably costings and, and time frames and all that kind of stuff in it. Is that right? What happens? Yeah. Yep. Yes. But it takes less than five minutes for me to organize all that. That's the thing. All right. Well, I, I'm really curious because you've got, kind of got me uh, interested in this aspect. Five minutes is a very short period of time. What is it that you do that you keep it to that minimal? Because I put proposals together. It doesn't take me five minutes. <laughs> I said it takes me five minutes to organize it. It doesn't actually take me five minutes to put the proposal together. <laughs> okay. All right. So, five minutes to think it out then, to, to write down what needs to be done. So, really at the planning stage. Well, um, I guess it, it, for one, it helps that I actually came from a legal secretarial background. Uh, um, you know, I, the, you get pro formers when you do legal secretarial work and so you have your guidelines of what you need to do, what it needs to consist of, what are the outcomes as a result of doing this. When you actually have a, a, a set pro forma is what we call it, um, you can go fill in, fill in, fill in, fill in, fill in, send. Um, and, and when you, you clearly know what you're doing, 
and you can go, this is done, this is done, this is done, it makes it five minutes or less to do. So it's really going through your checklist and, and shutting down um, your head to the other noise of other projects and other things you have to do yep. that makes it five minutes or less. Which is the reason why the checklist is so powerful because now talking about checklists, as you said, it just basically is a tick function and you just got to complete those tasks and once those tasks have been done, you can move on to the next thing. So, are you working on one project at a time or have you got multiple projects on the go? <laughs> I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> so, multiple I never projects. To one. <laughs> but the thing is, is like, this is the argument that we place up on these kind of things. Like, in, in many conversations I've had with other entrepreneurs, particularly with a few ones that you probably know, like I speak to Gideon regularly and we talk about just focusing on one project. And I totally agree with that because once you've got your mental focus on that one project and you get it complete, we feel as though we can get it completed much faster. It's like the headshot concept. If you focus on just that one part and get it done, then you can have your mental capacity released to focus on the next project. How do you do that with multiple projects? Well, what I do is I, I set time. So, um, I have this brilliant diary. Whoops. We're about to start a new month. So, I'm just going to show you a blank page so yep. that you don't see all my stuff. <laughs> so, I have this brilliant diary. It has um, personal, family and community business and it's like a task checklist and it's a 24-hour timeline here that I can fill in. I have journal notes but... What also is brilliant about it is that um, it has my month at a glance goal right at the beginning of the month. Um, I'm not sure you can really yep, see that. I can see that. Um, and it has my must do's, personal projects, and hobbies. And then right at the beginning, it has it has um, you know a year like calendar with these little things. And so. Really, it comes down to effective planning. Um, so in my day, for instance, today, you're the first thing that's happening to me. And technically, this is a project for me because, yep. it's a, you know, I have to focus and I have to be able to deliver, I guess, value information and be prepared for it. And so that's what I did. I wrote it down. I focused on it. I've finished it. Now what's next? Um, and so... When you're doing multiple things, I think it, you can actually, how do I put it? Um, it comes down to focusing on the one task at hand. Sometimes you have to wait for information. So what do you do next while you're waiting? Um, you do the next project. Yep. So really, I guess it's short tasks are really the projects that you're just focusing on. Once that short task is done for whichever project, then you move on to the next one and just keep churning it through I guess you can say until it gets coming through <laughs> it's so easy though just to let the tasks run because I, I personally have a whole list of it sitting right next to me right now for today that I need to get done and you know, whichever I feel like I can do first I'll do first if I don't feel like doing it I usually put it off to the end of the day uh, but then you know, if it doesn't get done by the end of the day the next day I do it and actually this morning I, I said I've got to finish these three important tasks which will generate revenue because if I don't invoice my clients I won't get paid so that was my motivation behind getting those tasks done <laughs> <laughs> so where there's, well, there's a strong incentive I'll do it <laughs> With me, this is what I do in my day is go, what is important? What actually gets me money? Mm. I mean, I am, I love money. Um, it helps me have fun. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> I think so, that's true in every aspect. <laughs> Hopefully, everyone thinks that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, so you, you focus on that and you go, what, so I have, you know, like you, I have checklists, but. I make it a habit of finishing my checklist and I tick it off and instead of thinking, oh my gosh, I have lots of check things to do, I go, how, how long is this task going to take me? Is, you know, and then if, if it's phone calls, you can do them all in the one time and often you think, oh my gosh, I have to phone call them, they're going to chat. But I guess maybe with um, my brilliancy of learning in um, working in a call center bank you have this process of 
yeah. guiding the conversation. <laughs> yes, that's right. I, so, I know this. <laughs> and, and making sure that it's short. Otherwise, they'll just keep yabbing on. I've had that issue before. People sit on the phone and talk to you for 10, 15 minutes and before you know it, it's already half an hour gone. <laughs> Can't let that happen. No. <laughs> yeah. So you guide the conversation. And so I think really you have to think of it not about the people but just the task. Yeah. The task honestly doesn't take that long. Sure, and anyway, um, depending on what it is. <laughs> yeah, most times it doesn't. It most of I think most times we spend our time thinking about the task. Yeah, I totally agree with you. So pretty much, what you've got in place is a diary. A, I should ask you, where did you get those kind of diaries from? Because I haven't seen them before. That's that's probably the first one I've ever seen with personal hobbies, twenty four hours. It's got like literally everything that you could have there. It is a brilliant. It has even financials in it. Wow. I got it as a Christmas present from my sister. So um, she probably got it. I'll, you know what? I'll find out who's the supplier. I think it's like one of those Collier's people. Oh, okay. You know, those diary makers. And then, um, you know, if your guests want one, they can go find it. <laughs> yeah, but it's, um, not yeah. some, it's not something that you just walk in and find in a news agency or, or bookstore. I have never seen that one before because I, I've well, looked in the bookstores for diaries and <laughs> never heard of them. <laughs> I have to ask my sister where she got it from. <laughs> you have to find that out. It, right. it has a memory jogger and everything in it. Wow. Like it's brilliant. It's, it's got everything there. I guess it depends on how you are. I'm I'm also still a book person because I like having my notebook next to my trusty notebook. It's like that yellow tab, uh, yellow paper that people talk about when they're like, like the legal pad. Yeah, exactly. I'm like that too. <laughs> but I still have all my electronic stuff, like my electronic calendar and all that kind of stuff. So it just sort of depends on how you work and how you run. But the most important thing is as long as you have something that's there and you can write down quickly or you can jot down your ideas quickly, then it, it, you know it works for you, for wh- whoever it is. Well, let's change up the yeah. gears a little bit. I wanted to ask you a little bit more about systems and processes that you run with your team. So, you've got your project manager and also to your customer service manager or customer service person. How are you communicating with them on a daily basis or weekly or whatever? To, oh, do you communicate with them on a daily or weekly basis? Um, one I do on a daily basis because we're both on Skype and we're both internet marketers, <laughs> so it's just easy to Skype each other. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so um, with him, I, I do, and we we are also, you know, doing other things um, outside of just project managing. Um, I guess it's the brilliancy of working with entrepreneurs sometimes. Um, so I, the three things I use is just Gmail, Skype, and Dropbox. Um, that's it. Maybe my mobile phone, but yep. that's it. Well, that's really minimalistic and I like the sound of that, <laughs> keeping it simple <laughs> and effective. The thing is, is though, well, let's break it down then. What do you usually use for Dropbox? What is it that you share on Dropbox? Is it? Um, big files. So with... Um, with with website design, you actually need copywriting done, mm. um, images, and um, these other big files. Um, and it's just so easy just to stick it into Dropbox because obviously email can't carry it, um, mm. and it organizes it. Um, I also put my proposals in there. I put. Um, documentation in there um, and I have what I call a running agenda so you know instead of us having to do heaps and heaps of emails yes. and me having to keep in touch with everything uh, I go it starts off and I don't actually have to ask them to do this they do that themselves because that's the system that we follow yep. is that every day um, they tell me what they're working on and then they close the day with what they've achieved and what they need from me and that's it. And yeah. then I respond at that same sheet, what uh, what they need, um, anything else that's new and it's done. Yeah, that's actually that's what I do except I do it via email. What we usually try to do is we she sends me and my team sends me a daily accountability of what they've completed for the day. If there's anything that I need to reply, I'll just reply back in the email. 
but the the way that you do that agenda also works as well. Um, and Dropbox, I mean, in that many, many ways, <laughs> it's very much the same. I, I put all our large documentation, any files, any images and all that gets all stored on Dropbox because then that way it can be shared in sync with all the rest of our team. Yeah, so it's very similar. I mean, like there's not much differences in that side. It's just minimalistic is probably the best. Less is going to provide you with more because then it makes it so much easier to find things and you don't have to go through all this mess <laughs> that we all yeah. get ourselves into. <laughs> uh, and I, I, I guess, you know, where you come from, where the experiences you had prior to becoming a business person counts for heaps because as a legal secretary, filing is paramount. <laughs> yes, I agree. And keeping file notes. Like I actually keep file notes of discussions and, and things like that so I know what is happening. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I give that to them. Uh, I actually give them to, that to my clients and even to my project managers so they know that we've had this discussion. Yeah. Well, that's good because then there's a consistency throughout to your clients and yourself as well. Mm. Do, do you store anything on your computer as well? No. <laughs> <laughs> so everything's pretty much on the cloud. Yeah, no, that's good because yeah. I think that's where people should be heading anyway. Uh, eventually, I think most people will be using the cloud to do most of the processing. Even today, now I'm, I'm using Google Docs to process and write email, not write emails, write documents and spreadsheets and everything, all like that. So it's it's pretty powerful. Therefore, you don't yeah. lose anything on your computer. Well, Google does that for me too. Like I, I use Gmail, and in Gmail alone, I use Boomerang for email, canned responses, and um, multiple logins because I have more than one. Gmail account um, and when you have canned responses, it makes it easy just to reply to people and um, there's ways you can actually send up, set up automatic responses with that canned responses and mail outs um, and that's also tying it in with their, their form of a Excel spreadsheet on their Google Docs and things like that. Yeah, and you can share that as well which is really good so I think that's really, really powerful. Any any other tools that you've been using lately that has helped you and your team in the business? Um, honestly, it's very minimal. So Gmail is what I do. Um, with my business, I probably um, – see, I wrote notes. Yeah. <laughs> Stop looking over here at my notes. Um, Fiverr is the place I go to if I want to just test something or I need a graphic design, a small graphic design quickly. Yep. I just go to Fiverr. Um, I think really what helps is being clear on the goal and knowing what needs to be done and not overanalyzing the actual task. It's a simple task, just do it. Yeah. Um, and... So I think Gmail and with, I guess, um, social media, I use Shortstack app a lot or um, because it just plugs, it plays and I, I would liken Shortstack app to WordPress for websites as um, Shortstack app is for Facebook. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really good because I, I think you mentioned it uh, recently to me, Shortstack app and I, I said I'd definitely be checking it out. How does it work though? Like when you're saying it's like a WordPress for f Facebook, how does it work? Well, um, so websites aren't awesome unless you use WordPress because you can just plug it in and yep. upload it. Yes. So Facebook and Shortstack app are the same process. So uh. you plug in, um, you upload your um, header, your tabs, your... It's like a mini website on Facebook. So you, you just put in whatever you want into Shortstack app to appear on your Facebook page and it plugs it plugs in and in. installs it for you. Wow, that is quick. So therefore, you don't have to go through all that process of filling how to use Facebook because personally, I don't use Facebook pages often enough because I've just found it a bit complicated and I just don't have the time to look at it. So even it, I've given it to my team to do. But it, I don't know. I haven't found Facebook as effective as other things that we do in our business. So yeah, it depends on what what you're doing. But now, well, now I don't, that, sorry, I actually don't use Facebook pages for myself. I do it for my clients. Oh, for your clients, yeah. Um, as as you have found for yourself, it 
it's not that effective, but you have to know your industry. So Twitter works well for my industry and yeah. what I do, but Facebook pages don't. So yeah. I'm happy. To, I know what I need to do for my clients and I do it really well. And that's, I don't just do it for me, but it's really about knowing your market. Exactly. And that's the good thing that you talked about is focusing on what your market wants and focusing on the things that are important rather than go out and do everything. It's not possible <laughs> to do everything, unfortunately. And you don't want that anyway, which is cool. <laughs> I wanted to also talk about your website, Katie, outsourcingqueen.com. Uh, I, when I hopped on there recently, it's very minimalistic. It's just got a blog post, uh, the heading, some titles, and then that's it. What's the reasoning? <laughs> what's the reasoning behind it? And and what do you, what do you want to share? What what do you share on on that particular site? Well, um, honestly, I took a year off blogging. I shut down. I got overwhelmed. Um, and so I took a year off and so I shut down all my websites. Nothing was online. But um, I, I still was doing business and um, networking and all those things and people wanted to meet me so you really need a website. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, and so I just actually only really started, I think in the beginning of December, um, re reborn it is lack of a better word. Um, and I just started. I thought I'm not, I'm an over analyzer, and I went um, in my head. I, I'm not a swearer out louder, but I do say it a lot in my head. <laughs> yes, <laughs> this. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm sick of. I, I think at that point I was sick of being one of those people who knows what I was supposed to be to do, but I was not doing it. Mm. And so I thought, I need to show by example what I'm doing. And so I'm going to start simple and I'm going to start with a blog. Why I quit blogging was my first blog. Sure. <laughs> um, and just keep it minimalistic, you know, to see what responses I would get. And I am honestly surprised by the feedback, the, you know, the how many people actually identified with what I was doing. So um, I'm after a few discussions with you even and some of my other friends, I've moved it from, because I've just started off the blog with get started, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and <laughs> that, that was the initial part of this blog. I'm now moving it into tips, hints and ninja tricks to hacking outsourcing. That's really good. It, it's, it's funny because it, has to, it takes time to evolve. Like when I first started, I just like you, I started blogging and I started using my own name to build up the branding behind outsourcing but it took a long, long time to even try and rank for the keyword outsourcing for a long time. So, I made a decision just like you to to change and just focus on something and only what, last year in around about June, I decided, okay, get outsourcing live which is the reason why that's focus dedicated just talking about outsourcing. Since then, it's it's been ranked on the first page of Google for the keyword term of outsourcing. So, it's <laughs> it made a huge <laughs> change. So, yeah, I think that's the thing. It takes time. It's not something that will happen immediately when you first start blogging or when you first start running a business. You just throw out whatever you can up on the wall and then whatever works, run with it and I can see that that's what's happened for you. Well, I, I blog Tuesdays. That's it. I, I've kept it so simple because... Um, you know, when you first get into this industry, you see them writing daily, three daily, whatever. Yeah, that's full on. You know, it can take a good two hours, maybe even four hours for me to write a blog post because I write something, I don't like it, I need to edit it. It's, I, and I want to, at the end of the day, my whole purpose in life is making a positive difference to the lives of others. So, you know, sometimes you start off this me, me, me focused blog and then you go, it's not about me, it's about them, them and yeah. then you change it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good approach to do and I think that's what people need to do on a on a day-to-day -day basis. Even just in business, if you're trying to help your client, you'll get a better result rather than trying to think, okay, how much can I make from it from this? So, it's it's definitely got to be that approach otherwise, you won't succeed in business. Absolutely. Well, Katie, thank you so much for coming on to the interview today. It's been a real pleasure to have you on. If people want to get in contact with you and find out more about what you're currently doing and more about our outsourcing tips and hacks for outsourcing, how can they get in contact with you? Uh, outsourcingqueen.com. 
Okay, it's excellent. Simple, easy, and memorable. <laughs> awesome. This is Outsourcing Lives Inside, Inside Info. Info. All right, as you've seen and heard as well, uh, Katie was talking about a really amazing tool that she uses to manage all her social media accounts. Nowadays, there's just so many things that go on and it just takes time to sign in, sign out and log in and tweet or like or put a message inside these social media networks. So, what's happened is that now a really amazing tool which has been around for quite some time but I've only started to use myself is called Hootsuite which Katie mentioned inside the podcast and I thought I'd just share that with you as well so that you can check it out and start using it for your business. And the reason why I'm recommending this tool is because it's an all-in-one solution where you can just log into this one dashboard and see all your social media accounts all inside all at once and that would save you a lot of time. Now, I've also set this up so that my virtual team can also access it particularly when we're posting out specific videos from the blog, I get them to post it out here, saves them having to log into each and every single account. This, play, this way, they just log in one time, post what they need to do and then finish and that would definitely cut down a lot of time. Now, to get access to this software and to use it, it's all for free, it's, you can actually go to outsourcinglive.com forward slash Hootsuite and that's spelled H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E and it integrates with Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+. Uh, I've also seen MySpace which I think is a little bit outdated but also to a few other things and it's recommended by a lot of big companies such as like Fox, Time, Martha, NBA, etc. And yeah, it's, it's used anywhere. And the great thing about it is that it's also mobile uh, accessible so therefore you can access it pretty much on any mobile device that's around. Now, if you do have more than five uh, social media accounts and you want to integrate that in, there is a monthly fee which is a very, very low fee, I think around about five bucks a month. So, it's actually still pretty worthwhile if you do sign up for that pro package and you can do unlimited things. Also too, Katie mentions that there is a scheduling function where you can schedule in tweets and, and messages that go in Hootsuite and that's another cool feature that you can set up and use as well. So, instead of sitting there and logging in at specific times, you can just set it up to send messages all spaced out at a period of time. And at the end of the day, I guess the whole idea behind a social media network or social media is to spread good content. And yes, you can go in there and chat to people and communicate with people but I think the power of this is to be able to get your message out there much quicker than waiting for your site to be ranked on Google for example if you're to develop that way. So, definitely check out Hootsuite which is at outsourcinglive.com forward slash Hootsuite, spell again H-O-O-T-S-U-I-T-E and also too, I'll make sure I put this down in the show notes which this is episode 32 which you can go and check it out at um, outsourcinglive.com forward slash episode 32. So, all the notes and also the details of this link will be there as well for you to check out. All right, so enjoy and I'll talk to you inside the next podcast. Discover more resources to grow your business inside Mass Outsource Mastermind. Watch the video tutorials and follow the easy instructions to take your business to the next level. Start your 30-day no-risk trial membership at freevideoset.com. That's freevideoset.com. This has been Outsourcing Live with Tyrone Shum. Outsourcing the hard stuff so you can focus on the fun stuff.